somewhere out on the world's oceans. An American aircraft carrier can spend about $6.5 million every day just to remain fully operational. In 24 hours, that can exceed what many people earn over a lifetime, and it accrues in both routine training and crisis deployments. The USS Gerald R. Ford drew attention for its roughly $13.3 billion construction price, but that figure is only the beginning. The larger, ongoing cost is what it takes to keep a carrier, its air wing, and its support ships ready to deploy on short notice. A modern carrier is a floating city with an airport on top. Thousands of people live aboard. Tens of thousands of meals are produced each day. Aircraft launch and recover in constant cycles, and each hour in the air can cost tens of thousands of dollars. In higher tempo operations, when flight schedules and logistics intensify, total daily costs can rise beyond $8 million. The costs fall into five buckets personnel, aircraft operations, nuclear support, ship maintenance, and the escorting strike group known as the carrier strike group. Together, those categories explain how one ship can approach $2.5 billion per year in operating expense. The USS Gerald R. Ford is about 1,100 feet long and displaces more than 100,000 tons when fully loaded. Its scale is obvious, but the most expensive part is not steel. It is the workforce required to run the ship continuously. Roughly 5,680 sailors and officers live aboard for months at a time. They need food, berthing, medical and dental care, training, and the basics of daily life that have to be delivered inside a self-contained environment. Feeding that population is an industrial operation. With meals for round-the-clock shifts, the Navy produces about 18,000 meals per day on a carrier, and the daily food bill can exceed $50,000. Personnel costs are far higher. Pay, benefits, healthcare, and the training pipeline add up quickly. Estimates place personnel costs for one carrier at about $1.2 billion per year, roughly $3.3 million per day. That figure reflects how specialized the work is. Nuclear propulsion crews require lengthy schooling. Aviation maintenance teams service aircraft with complex engines and electronics. Radar and combat system operators manage equipment worth hundreds of millions of dollars. The carrier's capability depends on that expertise, and expertise is expensive. The carrier also does not operate alone. It normally sails as the centerpiece of a carrier strike group, often alongside about five destroyers and cruisers, supported by a fast attack submarine and supply ships. When those additional crews are included, the total headcount tied to one strike group typically totals several thousand personnel across the group, and every sailor brings the same long list of costs, pay, training, food, and support. Readiness adds its own burden. Flight deck operations run in all weather, day and night, Engineering teams monitor propulsion and electrical systems without pause. Damage control and medical teams drill for emergencies because small problems at sea can escalate quickly. A carrier is built to be ready for combat at any moment, and that standard drives constant spending. The next major cost is the aircraft. A carrier typically embarks 60 to 80 aircraft, including fighters, electronic warfare aircraft, airborne early warning platforms, and helicopters. Buying them costs billions, but operating them is the real drain. Flight hours add up fast. An FA-18 Super Hornet can cost more than $10,000 per flight hour, and the F-35C can exceed $30,000 per flight hour. Those figures include fuel, maintenance labor, inspections, parts replacement, and system checks after every landing. The performance out here has been nothing but sensational. Aviation fuel is consumed in enormous quantities. During routine operations, a carrier can use about 20,000 gallons of aviation fuel per day. During intensive operations, consumption can rise beyond 150,000 gallons daily. At typical prices, aviation fuel alone can top $350,000 in a single high tempo day. Maintenance is continuous because carrier aircraft operate in salt air, land under heavy stress, and run at extreme engine loads. 
The Navy has estimated that operating the air wing assigned to a carrier can cost about $1.8 billion per year, roughly $5 million per day, before ship costs are even counted. When a carrier is used for sustained combat operations, the pace multiplies those expenses. Higher sortie rates mean more fuel, more wear, and more parts consumed in less time. In early Afghanistan operations in 2001, carrier aircraft flew a major share of US strike missions, often sighted near three quarters, showing how tempo drives cost. Weapons add another bill. A Tomahawk cruise missile can cost close to $2 million. Air-to-air -air missiles can run into hundreds of thousands of dollars each. Even routine ammunition and training ordnance add up when dozens of aircraft fly every day. Sustainment at sea is also costly. A carrier can store enough aviation fuel for roughly 20 days of flying before it needs replenishment. That resupply depends on tankers and supply ships transferring fuel and cargo while underway, an essential but complex routine that requires skilled crews on both ships and careful coordination in open water. Nuclear power is often described as a savings because the ship does not need regular propulsion refueling. The USS Gerald R. Ford uses two A-1B nuclear reactors designed to run for decades between refueling and to generate vast electrical power for ship systems. The Navy has estimated total life cycle nuclear fuel costs around $975 million, averaging about $19.5 million per year, or roughly $53,000 per day. The higher cost is operating the nuclear enterprise safely, training nuclear qualified crews, retaining them, and maintaining strict testing and inspection programs. The biggest nuclear bill arrives at midlife. The carrier enters a refueling and complex overhaul that can last up to three years, with major modernization work and replacement of expended nuclear fuel. Public estimates often place a single RCOH near $6.5 billion. Nuclear propulsion still brings important operational advantages. With less space devoted to propulsion fuel, the ship can carry more aviation fuel and weapons, including large stocks of JP-5 for the air wing. It also allows the carrier to sustain high-speed transits for long periods without needing to refuel itself, which can matter when rapid positioning is required. Those advantages rely on a broader support network, specialized facilities, training sites, laboratories, and shipyard capabilities. The cost of that infrastructure is spread across the nuclear fleet, and each carrier effectively shares in it. Even on days when the ship is not launching large numbers of aircraft, maintenance spending remains high. Saltwater corrosion, mechanical wear, and software-intensive combat systems require constant upkeep, and small failures can become major repairs if they are not caught early. The Ford class introduced many new or upgraded systems compared with the Nimitz class, including the electromagnetic aircraft launch system, advanced arresting gear, and dual band radar. New technology can improve performance and efficiency, but it also increases short-term maintenance demands as crews and supply chains adapt. Routine upkeep can run around $1 million to $2 million per day, covering repairs, inspections, cleaning, painting, software updates, and replacement of worn components. Periodic shipyard maintenance adds major costs in bursts, sometimes reaching hundreds of millions of dollars during planned overhauls. Over the long run, the Ford class is designed to reduce costs through automation, smaller crew requirements, and fewer major maintenance periods over a 50-year service life. The Navy has projected savings of about $5 billion per ship compared with older designs, but those savings are measured in decades, not in the early years of service. Finally, the carrier's daily cost is inseparable from the strike group around it. Escorts such as Arleigh Burke-class destroyers, and when present, Ticonderoga-class cruisers provide air defense and missile capability. A Virginia-class attack submarine adds underwater protection, and logistics ships keep the force supplied. Each vessel brings its own fuel, maintenance, and crew costs. Counted together, the full strike group can run close to $8 million per day. That is the full package required to keep the carrier not just afloat, but defended, supplied, and ready to operate far from friendly ports. 
The Navy treats that spending as the cost of a mobile airbase that does not depend on local politics. Land-based aircraft need airfields and host nation permission, and access can be denied. Long-range bombers can strike from afar, but cannot maintain the same sustained presence overhead. A carrier can remain offshore for months, launching fighters, helicopters, surveillance aircraft, and support missions from a single deck. Carriers have also shaped past campaigns and crises. In the Korean War, carrier aircraft were often credited with about 41% of American combat missions. In Vietnam, carriers provided more than half of the air raids against North Vietnam. In 2003, when some regional basing options were limited, carriers helped generate thousands of sorties during the opening month of the Iraq invasion, including about 8,000 sorties from five carriers. Beyond combat, carrier deployments are used for signaling and deterrence. A strike group arriving near a hotspot is visible, both to allies and to competitors, and it can create pressure without immediate escalation. That presence is one reason carriers remain politically and militarily attractive, despite their cost. The United States has operated 11 aircraft carriers for years, and has planned a transition toward a fleet centered on Ford-class ships as older Nimitz-class carriers retire. The debate over vulnerability, cost, and necessity continues, but the capability remains unique. In the end, $6.5 million per day is not one expense. It is the combined cost of people, aircraft operations, nuclear support, constant maintenance, and a protective strike group operating as a single system. The USS Gerald R. Ford is not only a ship, but it is also an airbase, a command center, and a home for thousands of service members at sea. If this breakdown helped explain where the money goes, like the video and subscribe for more detailed looks at military technology and the costs behind it.